Hello, my name is Renee Astley. Welcome to Creating a Dashboard Video. My objective is to show you how quick, easy, and fun it is to create a dashboard. A dashboard is simply a collection of reports or searches. So let's say we create a search to view our top 10 products that sold in the last 24 hours. So here I have my search. Uh, you could see that I'm piping to the top command based on the product name argument. And I'm going to go ahead and run this over the last 24 hours. Now at this point, I love the output, but I would rather see it in a pie chart. So I'm going to go ahead and click the third tab called Visualization, and I'm going to change it to Pie. Now this is great. I'd like to add this to a dashboard. So let's go ahead. Let's click on Save As, Dashboard Panel, and here you're going to see we're going to be defining our brand new dashboard. It is a new dashboard, so let's go ahead and give it a title. Let's simply call it Sales Results. Now after that, you do need to define permissions, so we're going to go ahead and share in this app. The last point here is going to be to define a panel title for this specific report. So let's go ahead and call it Top 10 Products. Love it. Now let's go ahead and click Save. Let's view our dashboard. Click View Dashboard. And now you can see we've just created our first panel on our Sales Results Dashboard. So while we're reviewing this, we're actually realizing that we have other save reports that would, you know, lend themselves well to this specific dashboard. So let's go ahead and see how do we add additional panels. So we're going to go and click on the Edit button and select Edit Panels. Once we do that, we'll see a couple of new buttons and the first one is to add a panel. So I'm going to click on Add Panel, and at this point, you need to decide, is it an inline search? Do you want to include an inline pivot? Or do you have a saved report? Well, as I mentioned, I have a saved report. So I'm going to click on the third icon for the content type. And then right underneath, I'm going to select the report I wish to add. And we're going to select Total Sales by Product. Now, I like to give my panels titles. so for the content title here, I'm going to call this Sales by Product. Now I'm going to go ahead, click on the Add Panel. Now you'll notice that right underneath the panel where our pie chart is, now we've got our Sales by Product panel. Now I like this. It's a table. I'm going to keep it in a table format. Now let's go ahead and add one more. So I'm going to click on Add Panel again. It is a saved report. We know how to do that now. I'm going to select, and this time I'm going to select Lost Revenue by Product. Don't forget, maybe it's a great idea to give it a title. So I'm going to call it Lost Revenue by Product. And now I'm going to Add. Now let's scroll down and see the panel we just added. We added this panel, but you know what? I wish to change the visualization this time. So what I could do for that specific panel is click on the second icon and this allows us to change the visualization. So for this example, we're going to select bar. Now once I've done that, I could kind of look at this and say, you know what, I would rather remove the legend. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And maybe you want to rename lost sales to maybe lost space sales. So let's go ahead, let's click on the third icon for this panel, and you'll notice that we can set titles for our X and Y axis. So let's go ahead and select Y axis. We're going to set a custom title, and here we're going to actually call it Lost Sales. The other thing we want to do is remove the legend. So I'm going to click on legend and I'm going to set that position to none. And now I'm going to apply. Now you can see that we've changed the visualization for this specific report. Now this is great. We could scroll up. Now the other thing that we can do is maybe move some panels around. So maybe I would rather see the sales by product 
panel at the top. So the way I do that is I select the upper bar of that panel and I drag and you'll notice that I could drag and drop. Now the other thing that I might want to do is maybe set you know the top 10 products with the lost revenue side by side. I could do that as well simply again by dragging and dropping and you'll see everything gets resized for us. Now this dashboard looks great but all the data is based on 24 hours. So I'm going to show you how you can make this more user friendly and effective by allowing the viewers of the dashboard to select a different time range. Now one thing to be aware of when you do set the time range picker is that it only applies to searches that are in line and that don't have the latest and earliest XML elements defined. So I'm going to go ahead and make those appropriate changes so you could see how it's done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a time range picker. It's a great idea to set a default other than all times so I'm going to select by default the last 24 hours. Now as I mentioned every panel must be converted to an inline search. So the way we do that is simply by going to the panel itself and you'll notice that I'm going to select total sales by product and you'll notice that I have a selection here clone to an inline search. So I'm going to clone that to an inline search. Well if you recall the third panel that we added also was a report so I'm going to convert that as well to an inline search. Now the last thing I did mention is that we do have to go in and edit the XML so at the top right hand corner I'm going to select edit source. When I edit the source the only thing that I need to do is find my different reports and simply remove here the earliest and latest times. So I'm just going to quickly kind of scroll down here and I'm going to do that for all my reports and now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to save my source and let's click on done. And what I want to show you now is that the data that you have in your dashboard is based on the last 24 hours. But if I want, I could go ahead and select last seven days and you will notice that the data in each of the panels gets updated based on the time criteria that I've selected from my time range picker. Now voila, we built a great looking and very informative dashboard in less than 10 minutes. Hope you enjoyed this video.